video on this channel, I talk about things like spiritual warfare, prophecies, chosen ones, and I'm getting into telling encounters. And what I'm going to do is I just want to tell you about what I think about the last encounter I posted, which was actually my first one. Um, instead of doing it in one video, post them separately just in case people might not want to hear my theories and my conclusion, but just in case you do want to hear it. So I had an encounter with something that I thought was a Grim Reaper. On another occasion, I had an encounter with um, what, what I'm going to call for the video, the Lord of the Underworld. And so I was left really confused after seeing them because it, it was very biblical. But which one of them was the devil? Which one was Lucifer? And why was it one the Grim Reaper and one in the Underworld? And it didn't quite make sense to me until I started digging deeper. And it started with, from my grandma's culture, we have Thunderbird and Bacquas, who's called um, Lord of the Underworld. They also call him Wild Man of the Woods. And they also call him the Chief of Ghosts. So this one, the Chief of Ghosts is Lord of the Underworld, but the, the Wild Man of the Woods, I believe there's actually like many of them. They're kind of like described as little trolls, but it's said that they've traded um, spirit food with the Lord of the Underworld. And at some point along the lines, I realized that that was just like Hades, um, Lord of the Underworld from uh, Greek. And I realized it funny enough, watching Titans or Clash of the Titans, there was a moment where um, Hades sinks Perseus's boat. And I went, holy smokes, because not only that boot thing was the same, but that's what he said to do is whenever a boat is lost at sea because um on the co on the coast here we, um food was mostly gathered from the ocean and so there was a lot of boats and canoes and anytime a boat was lost it was said that um Bacchus was the one who sank the ship and now this other entity who's the most powerful entity is the thunderbird who is a uh, described kind of like an eagle but he's got some other characteristics like horns and um, he carries this double-headed serpent which in my opinion kind of sounds like a caduceus from egypt which is like a staff which is entwined with these two serpent serpent heads so this thunderbird and buck was um was kind of where it started and then um during that movie i was watching and there's this whole there's this whole lineage of things that kept tipping me off and sending me new places but I was watching that movie and I realized like, holy sh holy smokes, this Thunderbird and Hades are the same as our culture, even though people would consider them completely different. The stories are the exact same. And like, here's what I mean is we got this number one, this Thunderbird, right? Zeus is a Thunderbird because he transforms into a, an eagle and he flies about like an eagle. And when he lands on the ground, he turns into a, you know, his Zeus man form. The thing is, is he also has a goat form and goat horns at times. And so there's another thing I, I learned along the way called a Piazza bird, which is an another culture's thunderbird. And this thing looks like a dragon with the head of Zeus and it's got horns. They're, they're more like deer antlers. Um, but I, as I kept looking, so I kept finding more thunderbirds from not just one culture, two, three, four, every single one of them, whether they call it the Feathered Serpent, the Thunderbird, the Piazza, Zeus, Jupiter, Amun-Ra, there was this other one, Enki or Enlil. And this theme with um, the second in command being Lord of the Underworld was constant. And I kept thinking like, there's no way that this is, this is a coincidence. And eventually, like I started thinking about my two encounters, which were um, the Grim Reaper and this Lord of the Underworld character. And it's a hard one to match up like, it's hard to to match the lineage because they seem so different. But when you get into Zeus, um, he he falls like lightning from the heavens, meaning he flies like an eagle, lightning strikes, and then he lands on the ground. Um, this is the same as the vision quest with Jesus in the desert. And um, I call it a vision quest because it's very similar to the Lakota vision quest with Crazy Horse who went fasting in the desert. But Crazy Horse seen a figure who looked like Jesus, um, who they called the unadorned rider who is sent from... Wanka Tonka or Waka Tonk Takan, I think it is, which means great spirit. And um, so there's all these similarities with um, with them. But when we picture the biblical version of the devil, we think one devil, one God, 
of good versus evil. But what actually happens is there's this group of fallen angels and they're led by two beings. There's the evil one and then there's his lieutenant. Um, and in Revelations, they fought Gabriel and Michael. They ended up losing. And this is when, I believe, after they lost, this is when they popped up in Sumeria. So there's almost like Revelations, to me, is like the, the origin of the Grim Reaper. And it's no surprise to me that a soldier seen him and he saw him in the desert. And you know, what, what if this thing could at times appear to be something it's not like a god, like the Most High? that we keep seeing again and again. And the Bible does call him an eagle at one point on Obadiah 1.4, if you want to look into it. Um, so all this stuff is important because there's these two guys, um, so their names were Lucifer and Beelzebub. Um, there's also a third one. They call him First Beast, Second Beast, Third Beast. And in my opinion, they're also the, the Ziz, Behemoth, and Leviathan uh, because the way the Thunderbird is described, he's... Um, his wings block out the sun. He's an eagle type being. When he flaps um, his wings, it causes hurricanes and thunderstorms. Um, that is the Ziz. And where also I mentioned that Lucifer was called an eagle. He's called the dragon, a snake. The thing about it is characters like Zeus, Odin, um, Amon-Ra, they're associated with the main character is the eagle. The secondary would be goats and the third is snake. Now you can maybe switch those around like maybe second is snake, but it's quite common for them to use those forms and they always have a pantheon led by the first, second and third who are usually called Lord of the Air, Lord of the Sea and Lord of the Underworld. And there's a constant theme with that. And so people who are seeing the Grim Reaper, it is a biblical entity, it's a mythological entity, it's a paranormal entity. It's all the same thing. These are all different interpretations of that same beast, that same creature. And the reason why he's there is because that's who's going to take you on what's called a life review. Now, there's two different possibilities. It's almost like if you've played video games where you, your character can be good, he can be evil, which will give you two different cutscenes at the end, depending on which side you, you choose. That's sort of how this works, where if you're good, it's going to be Jesus taking you um, on your life review. If you're bad, it's going to be the Grim Reaper, and you're going to get two different life reviews based on that. Now, I've heard stories where people see both. Um, in my case, I saw on two different two different times. Once it was Grim Reaper, next it was um, Lord of the Underworld, which was, even, which was kind of scarier looking because he didn't have anything to... The, the Grim Reaper was just a black cloak kind of thing. So my end conclusion is I do believe that this was a true story. These things happen quite often. Now, was it because he was, he says he wasn't fasting, he wasn't delirious, nothing like that. But what I think is, is the fact that he's seen him is it's given him a chance to change something, to do something, to not do something, because you don't want these things like in the background of your life. And just when you, when you have a chance to see them, it's really a warning to do something different. Pursue answers, you gotta do something. And I think the only way to combat this, these things are to believe that there is good spiritual entities out there and to do your best to find out who they are. And this character, Jesus, based on what I was looking into, um, I mentioned Vision Quest with Crazy Horse. I started noticing this theme with um, military leaders. And so this is why I said I, don't, I wasn't surprised that a soldier seen seen this thing because um all these movies that have to do with prophecy chosen ones they usually revolve around this sort of military leader and it's they're based on vision quests which are like a vision quest was just a basically a hero's journey or a healer's journey um where they would go into an altered state of conscious and have a vision maybe it was by near-death experience and you know stories like alice in wonderland come to mind the Matrix, Terminator, Star Wars, all these stories are roughly based on the same thing, prophecy. And so when it comes to historical chosen ones, they all kind of have similar journeys. They're up against similar um, villains, kings, authorities, soldiers. And it's all mentioned in the armor of God, which is what I think the vision of Crazy Horse was about. Um, the main thing was like this rider said, do these things and you won't be defeated. And the fire arrows won't touch you and that's something that comes right out of the armor of god which i think applies right to joan of arc and braveheart who we know are real and if we look at the story of these three characters we can actually start piecing together these old tales like king arthur perseus um hercules 
And like when we're talking about Perseus and Arthur, they're very similar to Moses starting off as babies in the water, rising. And what I was trying to share this with somebody and I was telling them like, so look at all these historical movies are one universe, right? Like a cinematic universe, let's call it. Um, and when we look at Marvel, you know how there's all these different characters, but they come from one universe, one storyline. We can look at these historical movies the same way because they're all based on our timeline, one timeline. So if we look at all these movies, videos as one, can we see the devil in the details? Can we see the armor of God in the details? Are they biblical stories, not just historical, mythologic? mythological or fairy tales are these biblical continuations and do and these characters always come face to face with not only near death experiences but in my opinion they come face to face with the same same things that we do which are that hooded cloaked figure sometimes it appears as a god sometimes it falls like lightning sometimes it's an eagle or a dragon but it's always that same being and if you have any encounters with it, um, feel free to send it in. I'm going to put the email below. I just wanted to share my opinions on that. And if you are having any encounters with uh, with the Reaper, um, the first thing you, you should do is look into, into Jesus Christ, look into the Bible, and start trying to really understand it, put in a good effort. Because if this stuff is real, if we're experiencing it today, people were experiencing it yesterday, and maybe... If we can get all these stories together, we can start piecing together what it means. This is where I'm going to end it. Thanks for watching. I will catch you on the next one.